My lord, did Fruits Basket hit me in the feelings with this week's episode. Give me a double dosage between Momoji and Momo, and then of course we have Arisa as well as Kurano, and I'm just like, god damn Fruits Basket, you know how to stick me right in the heart, just make me feel so much pain, but also see a brighter tomorrow, and it always leaves a very satisfying, but also a bitter taste feeling in my mouth, because I'm like... How long must these characters suffer before they get that brighter tomorrow? We know the answer when the anime's done, and I'm like, god damn, is that a while away? This show is continuing to blow me away, especially characters like Momoji, who have quickly risen to be one of my favorite characters in the show, and without a doubt in my mind, is the biggest switch in terms of a character I really didn't have that much interest in. I never hated any character in Fruits Basket. I mean, I guess Akito, but even then I'm happy Akito's in the show because without, I mean, really, would we have conflict? Not really. It would feel very artificial in comparison. Honestly, Momoji is the character who had the biggest trope design, in my honest opinion, and has quickly become one of the most fascinating characters because of everything that's happened and kind of similar to Toru, the positive persona definitely has a lot of sadness underneath that fake smile. The whole idea of what happened with him and his family is so tragic, and you want to hate characters like the father in terms of trying to keep a fake family together, but at the same time we know just what the curse does to people and how, you know, the idea of parents are either going to go really, really positive or really, really negative, and seeing what we've seen with his backstory, I think it's very understanding why a character like Momoji would swallow his own feelings so others could be happy in his place because he cares for his parents, he cares for his sister. He literally says that his dream is to have a small concert where they all will come and watch him perform the violin. It is goddamn tragic, but I don't want to hate any of the characters involved here because we know just how messed up this whole curse situation is, which is why it's so rootable to look at a character like Toru and say, please for the love of God, break this curse, find a solution that no one else has. It's really interesting to me how he cares so much, but always just keeps himself on the sideline. If his sister starts taking up violin lessons from the same teacher that he has, he has to quit as per his father's request. But it's not even just because his father requested, because he believes in it too. Like, I can't let myself get too close or everything that's been repaired will fall apart again. And it's very easy to blame yourself when you feel like everything's going pretty okay now that you're not a part of the situation. It is so tragic and... I don't feel like I want to blame anyone in this situation. I don't feel like blaming is going to solve anything. You just feel bad. And that's what's great about the writing is rather than playing into what a lot of authors do, where it just pisses you off with a character and it's very easy to say, I hate this character, this character deserves death, this character deserves to feel lonely. Fruits Basket does anything but that. Yes, I've seen a lot of fans say exactly that, especially towards characters like Octo. But for me, I've never really felt like the author has went that direction, but rather has said, humanity is a very sad thing, and if people are lonely, if people have things that are bad to them happen, it's going to cause for some unfortunate things, and humans don't deal with negative emotions all that well, and if you amplify it with a curse of some sort, it's going to get even worse, and if anything, characters just need a goddamn hug and they need a wake-up call, and it's really nice how the wake-up call for Momoji and Momo in this episode were so peaceful in comparison to a lot of things. The fact that this girl has recognized that this is her brother. The fact that the facial structure is identical to the mother. Even if the father and mother say no, like, there's something going on there, and even if for whatever reason, biologically, they weren't related, all the things that she likes about life, seemingly this kid does too. I would love to have him as a big brother, and the fact that every time she made a step forward towards him, he took 10 steps back and not realizing that she knew exactly who he was. And that's why the happy tears and just the sad tears mix into one is so painful and one of my favorite moments of season two. And I know I say that a lot, but what's great is because they keep bouncing around different characters, we're seeing like some of the best moments for all these characters in season two. And I can only imagine what the final season could look like depending on where they take it. And I love that they don't just follow a structure of going, here's this character's arc, now here's this character's arc, here's this character's arc, here's the main plot line. Rather, they kind of touch upon things in a non-linear fashion, which makes the flow of the structure really, really solid because it doesn't feel plot convenient, but rather this is a world full of real people and their lives are going to go up and down, back and forth, non-stop, and might relate to the main plot, might relate to just their own personal story, and it's not like things just magically get resolved because life is a complicated beast, 
as seen by the whole Arisa as well as Kurno kind of romantic subplot line with him taking the number but not calling it or contacting her as of yet because he knows it would piss off Akito. There's a lot of great narrative structures here and it's what makes it so emotionally engaging. I think it's why it makes characters like Momoji or any of the Somas really easy to root for because it doesn't feel like they're just there for a emotional arc and then they're gone and they just have this magical development. They're constantly going to sink down or come up depending on the situation and it's really nice to see how there's lasting effects to the show like how Momoji is legitimately terrified that Toru could have something worse if not the same thing happened to her again in reference to just the claw marks across her face and the abuse she had to suffer during that summer vacation. It's amazing to me what they're able to accomplish with the narrative when a lot of these elements started off very cliche at surface level but I'm always willing to give the benefit of a doubt even if something's not really my cup of tea if there's other elements that I really like until I see the full package I'm not going to say 100% this is an issue. That's why I never from the beginning was like Momoji's character design is an absolute issue. I was like it's not really for me but we'll see where it goes and I'm so happy I think like that because now I can really appreciate everything that's happened with his character and just I can't even begin to imagine where this family could go now that the brother and sister are aware of everything but the parents are trying to keep them away. Are they going to meet in secret? Like what's gonna happen? And just the touching reunion with how he's going to perform Toru's favorite song and practice for her. It's so nice how genuine the relationships legitimately feel because it makes it so rootable every single time and you know everyone needs a damn hug in this series and then some. The Kurno and Arisa plotline is amazing to me. I'm actually really surprised he touched upon it again so soon. I thought maybe towards the end of the second season, if not the final season, is when they would get around to this. But it's really nice how Arisa is very much, you know, she's not dealing with it that great in terms of quitting jobs and things like that, getting new ones. And I like how it's like not this whole like, oh, this is the boy I like and Toru is just oblivious to the name and things like that. She's like, oh, wait, could that be a Soma that I met? And she's like, what the hell? Oh, no, it can't be. You're describing someone who's way more different than the airhead that I know. And I actually do like how Toru inserted herself in the situation. It didn't feel like she was stepping on anyone's toes here. She was saying, hey, I have this connection to the Somas. I truly believe this could be the person that she's looking for. I would be kind of a shitty friend if I didn't at the very least see what's going on. Did he just not know how to contact her? If that's the case, I can give the contact information. It's really nice because it doesn't feel like one of those situations where a friend is inserting themselves in another's romance problems, but rather... From her point of view, it seems like the romance problems is they don't know how to contact each other, so it doesn't feel like she's inserting herself into this relationship like you constantly see, not only in the real world, but especially in romance anime or any anime with a romantic plotline. And that's why the whole, like, kind of sneaking in situation and then just, I don't know what the hell happened with that woman coming out where she's like, hey, come on in, boy, and he's like, I got somewhere to go. I don't know what the hell that was, but that raised some red flags for me, I have to say. But I really did like how simple the conversation between him and Toru actually was because it felt like it was just literally back and forth on their faces. There wasn't all that much to the directing overall. There wasn't too much difference in the movements. You saw his face, you saw her face. There was a couple of differences for sure. But it was really nice how raw and real that moment felt and how she's like, hey, I understand like stuff like this could get you in trouble. I'm going to place it right here. Take me away in reference to how he starts off saying like I could have you arrested. It just feels as if Toru does insert herself a lot and sometimes I think she inserts herself in an unhealthy way. In situations like this, I don't think so. Like, she definitely recognized how just sad the situation was that she feels like they can't be together but seemingly want to. But at the same time, as seen by the end of the episode, he does take the note and he legitimately seemed happy that she did that but also sad that it reminded him that he can't have what his heart actually desires as he's trapped in a cold, icy web. The writing in this show is completely spot on and is tragically beautiful. I think Fruits Basket's greatest strength is how it doesn't rely on just being predictable or shocking. In terms of shockingness, it's like, oh, here's an emotionally sad thing, but rather, characters just think about things in a very real and raw way. Toru constantly thinks about her mother and she needs encouragement from her mother and she constantly feels like the reason she chases after so many people's kind of present and future is because her future that she really desired has been ripped away from her so she wants to mend and repair all those that she cares for so the same thing doesn't happen to them and it doesn't even just have to be death it can just be you don't know how to contact the person you might love and that just breaks her heart and it's so sad and tragic and that's why I really like how the episode ends with Kyo and her on the rooftop because it's such a simple thing and at this point it definitely feels to me 
like this is the romance that's blooming Kyo and her and it doesn't feel to me like I'm just doing this from like a shipper's point of view I really don't get wrapped up into shipping I've said that since the beginning of Fruits Basket and you can go through multiple series I don't care about shipping I care about what a character actually wants and as long as the narrative explains why they love this person and they don't even have to love the right person it can be a toxic relationship and provide for a really great narrative but both her and Kyo clearly love each other I think that's why she really starts breaking down and crying in that moment because she realizes that this is the person who she loves she doesn't understand it herself but I think it's because like she realizes like this is someone who's taking care of me and I can truly trust and he believes like I'm gonna get locked in a cage but I'm going to help you I'm going to root for you I'm gonna make sure you find someone who can truly take care of you not realizing that he can be that person and her not realizing that he's the one that she actually desires in her heart but really cares for him and it's really interesting I think that's why characters like Yuki have separated himself so much realizing that these two have the most compatibility it's just the uncertainty of what will happen to Kyo and will he be caged in because of this goddamn curse. The writing on the show is fantastic. The directing can be fantastic. This wasn't even the most shockingly beautiful episode. It wasn't the most visually dramatic, but it really captured the realness, the rawness, and just the sorrow. And the sound of sorrow was just seen by so many characters. I just root for everyone. I even root for Akito to just get out of whatever the hell is happening to this character. First Basket, for being as supernatural as it is, is surprisingly realistic with its rawness. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What did you prefer? Did you prefer the Arisa and Kurno content or was it the Momoji and Momo content? If I'm picking a side, it's definitely the Momo side because I wasn't expecting this little girl to understand that that was her brother. And it was really sad and just... I mean, slightly optimistic depending on how it goes route. I don't know, but it was definitely memorable. So let me know your feelings down below. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to share your support. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.